So let's get started. I'm going to start at the top of the hour. I have no idea how long I should have timed my talk. I might be running late, so I want to get all the minutes I can. So this talk, the title here is better than the one on the, on the, on the, um, the schedule. It says defending against out of, out of management BMC attacks, which makes a little more sense. Um, uh, if you haven't had a chance to read this, this is uh, the initial summary of the problem by one of the first security researchers who was looking at these chips a few years ago and said, wow, this is just a terrible situation. Um, so hopefully most people have read that because I've had it up on the display for a while. I don't want to read that to you. but. <laughs> So the agenda is um, we're going to be covering the concepts of, of baseboard management controllers and lights out management, and then talking about some of the technology involved, the, the chips and the uh, protocols, and um, so you have a better idea of what's happening in the system. So you can start to then, then the goal here is we're focusing on defending yourself. So you're an end user of one of these machines. You're not a vendor building a machine, but you're an end user who has a machine you want to protect or your assisted man who has a fleet of machines you need to protect. Uh, most of these concepts apply to servers, so they're more, you, it's more interesting for assisted mins, but a few of these are on desktops, so an end user might have to worry about this as well. Uh, so we're gonna talk the most about IKBI and Redfish. Uh, some of these other technologies we'll just mention to understand what's needed. Uh, IKMI++ is a term by the person who wrote that other quote, Dan Farmer, he kind of lumps in all of the post IPMI value added um, features um, that vendors are doing. Uh, that was back before Redfish, so I guess I could call this stuff now Redfish++ in the current era. And uh, these are the people that, that have written the research. I'm not, I didn't invent this research. Uh, Dan Farmer did a lot of it, HD Moore came along later, and then most of the rest of these authors. So Dan and HD Moore did stuff around 2013 for IPMI. Most of the rest of this stuff came uh, last year. So it's kind of a spike in BMC attacks. So that's another reason why you should be more concerned about this. There's an increase in security research attacking these things, so you need to be more careful about defending against them. So let's start at the beginning. In the old days, the CPU was in charge of the system. You turn on the computer, the CPU was in charge. On a multiprocessor machine, they'd have to figure out who ran the thing first, but they'd, they'd all work it out. Fairly simple. The CPU was in charge, it talked to memory, it talked to um, disk, or it, um, it, it talked to registers, it talked to memory, and it talked to I/O buses, and so it could do all this stuff. Pretty straightforward. So that's when I when I started computing. That's what it was like, nice and simple. Um, and that's where all the malware is like. People are used to uh, malware attacking software that runs on CPUs, so operating system and, and apps. Um, there's also something called systems management mode, and uh, sometime around uh, mid 8386, uh, there was a, uh, a change where Intel added um, a new mode, systems management mode. Previously, the, the traditional CPU, so this is a new mode of operation to the, the main CPU. The main CPU used to be 16-bit protected mode, and then 32, let's forget the 36. 16-bit uh, protect mode, and then 3 to 6 flat linear address space, which is the great, great thing. Um, then there was this new mode called management mode, where if there was a system, systems management interrupt, it would leave the regular CPU operation and go into this other mode, management mode, where, where uh, only special code that would run in, in, in systems management interrupts and knew about that systems management space has access to. So. Um, this is also an interesting place for malware to hide now because if you're if you're an SMM, you get you can see everything the CPU can do, but you you're basically invisible to the CPU. So it's a great place for malware to hide. It was a great way to do maintenance on on the CPU. Uh, well, back then. But um, yeah, so roughly that's system management was roughly trust zone on ARM. Not, it's definitely not apples and oranges. So. In the old days, the CPU was in charge, and then later the CPU uh, added this new mode where it kind of let, went into a management mode, not the same kind of uh, control as, as it was. And now we have this other thing called a BMC, where uh, OEMs have been selling servers for a long time, and, and assisted mans want new features to make it more convenient and easy to administer, like remote access to things, access to machines while they're powered off. So or if a machine is hung, you want to be able to fix it. So what do you do? You've got to get around problems that the CPU is at. If the system is hung, 
that means the CPU is busted and you can't use the system. So what do you do? You, ha you have to have some other way to use the system. So um, BMC is a separate chip in addition to the CPU that's on the motherboard of modern servers. So it is now in charge, not the CPU. The BMC is in charge of the system. And it can see everything the CPU can do, and, and kind of like a system management mode, it can see everything the CPU can do, but the reverse is not true. The BMC is invisible to the CPU. So uh, it's an interesting place for malware because it's also invisible like systems management mode. Um, BMCs are mostly in server-based machines because that's, that's it, it, the, the intended goal as I, I, as I see it. It was, it was for sysadmins for managing fleets of machines. So it didn't make sense to be on a, a home desktop. However, there are some solutions we'll see later that have this BMC or BMC-like technology on desktop machines. So uh, you might have a machine, some, like some ThinkPads in the room here, our business quality, business class uh, laptops, those machines have the, the, the stuff under the covers here so that if it was, that machine was used in an enterprise, the enterprise system in there could, could uh, do this kind of stuff to, um, to, to track it. So, that's great if you're an enterprise and you're meaning to do that. If you're not aware of that and your system has this ability, you should at least make sure you've got the most recent version of it or up to, uh, have the right rules for it or disable it so you at least know what you're doing because attackers know about it and if you don't protect yourself against it, you can get attacked. So basically the BMC is a whole new chip on the system running a whole new operating system, an embedded operating system, usually Linux, although I think <coughs> Qnix is in some of them. Um, and it's, it's an operating system that, that its job is to control the computer. So um, <coughs> it offers you know, command line interfaces like shell, telnet, and SSH so you can run command line tools to interact with it. It also exposes network protocols so you can talk to it over the network. And the BMC usually has access to a network and it usually has its own network core, um, car, um, no, NIC, separate from the regular NIC. And that machine, did I mention it here? Hmm. Uh, one of the interesting things I forgot to mention so far about a BMC is a BMC is activated the minute you plug the computer into the wall. So normal computers, you plug it in, you have a power button. The power button is only useful for the CPU. You, you can power on and off, the, uh, the power button will turn off and on the CPU. It does not impact the BMC, the BMC is always on as soon as you plug it in. So the only way to turn off the BMC is to disconnect the power from the wall. Um, and I'm not sure, I think possibly if the machine had a battery, that might be an issue too. So if you're really paranoid, take the battery out, physically connect it from the wall, then you can um, uh, not worry about this. So a BMC is a chip that can be running, the chip that is running in your machine all the time while it's powered on, even when your machine's powered off. So it controls the CPU and it can do network traffic Again, while your machine's powered off, it can do network traffic, and if an attacker has access to that network, and they've got proper usernames and passwords, then that machine is toast. So uh, you need to protect against that. So that was BMC. Lights out management is a term um, for basically the feature set that, that invented the BMC. Um, turning turning on so that you know, light, a sysadmin wants to be able to turn off a machine uh, in another room. Turn it on. Look at, the, look at the power adjustment, things like that. So lights out management is the term for all the features that a BMC uses. And there's a few definitions of those. IPMI was the first, and it's still widespread. I'll be talking about that the most. Uh, smash and dash came later. S stands for server, D stands for desktop. They're pretty much the same thing. They use WS management, so SOAP and WSDL and that kind of XML packets for traffic. Uh, Redfish is a newer one, and it uses um, HTTP and JSON data, and um, so it's RESTful. So this is SOAP-based web services. This is RESTful-based, uh, and this is not not web. So, uh, so these days, uh, most all server vendors have IPMI. I don't see too much activity in Smash and Dash, and these days, it looks like most of them are adopting Redfish on the server side. On the desktop side, I see a few uh, running Dash. I'm not really sure about Redfish on the desktop as much right now. So we'll, we'll be going over most of these um, topics in future slides here. Um, lights out management, inbound, outbound. If the machine is turned off, the CPU is not active. Let's say there's not even an operating system installed. So, the, so you've, got, you've got a machine, it's 
physically connected, the BMC is active, the CPU is powered off, or powered on, who cares, it's just a CPU. Um, you're really talking to the BMC. And so at this point in time, you can use the BMC's NIC, and you can talk to it from that machine, you can talk to this machine over here, and, and power it on, change the operating system, whatever. Uh, so you can, out, out of bounds management, you can atta um, uh, administer the box over there, or if it's an attack, you can attack it there. Inbound, you can sit in the same box and type a command and, and, and modify your, your local box. But out of band is the interesting one where uh, an attacker, if it, if it has access to the network where your BMC is at, on, then they could be attacking your box all the time. And it gets worse. This stuff used to just be on Ethernet, but now some of these vendors are shipping Wi-Fi. So now there's Wi-Fi wi enabled BMCs. So you plug it in, but it's turned off. Now I could drive by your, your place, depending on your Wi-Fi support, I could, I could drive by and attack it. D depending on if you have a, if one of those machines, if one of those Wi-Fi uh, implementations ends up on a business class laptop, and then you take it to a Wi-Fi hotspot in a, in a, in a, a hostile country. Um, so. So uh, I just explained the next slide. Okay, great. Out of band management, in band, out of band. Um, and so they're doing all of these BMC things, the lights out management commands, uh, when the machine's off or when it's on. Uh, you can do it in band is when you do it, well, as an operating system app, you know, uh, from a, from a mm -hmm. Linux command, a shell prompt, IPMI tool, you can do some stuff. Or you could go to the UFI shell and run a, run a shell app that talks to IPMI or Redfish, latest versions of IPMI, the latest versions of UEFI now have support for Redfish, so you could sit down and, and talk to Redfish from the UEFI shell, or you could do it out of bounds from another machine over the network, and um, that's the kind of scary one to, to, to talk about. So uh, BMC is the main topic of this talk, and BMC is something that's traditionally for servers, because that's what system means are deploying a fleet of servers, but systems also have to, to, to look at desktops and laptops in their fleet as well. And um, so just forgetting the traditional server BMC issue aside, Intel has something called the management engine chip, and it does management of the system. So it, similar to the concept of the BMC, it's taking charge of the computer now to manage the system. AMD is the name of the chip. AMT is the name of the, of the, of the software that runs on that chip, or the, the firmware that runs on that chip. So uh, I don't think I've heard anyone from Intel confirm it, but it sounds like from reports that the ME processor is running a Minix-based operating system. And uh, AMT software comes in a variety of flavors, native x86 images, as well as, well as uh, Java applets. So uh, it's a full stack with, with a bunch of things on there. Um, it's also been getting the attention of security researchers recently, learning how to disable it. So talk to people like Purisms downstairs, they try to disable in me before they run, the, run their system. So, um, you know, it's, it's, uh, if you don't understand what it does, then it's, you want to be afraid and turn it off. And, you know, there's blobs there. So, so that, that vendor does that. I, I'm still afraid of, um, you know, when vendors, actually, I think it's currently at the, at the weaponized that point now where I think attackers know how to gain control of that processor. So now, before this was a processor running in the background like a BMC and it, it was monitoring the system for your own safety, now if an attacker's there, that's like the best place to hide your malware. So hiding your malware on an ME processor or on a BMC processor is, is a great thing um, for a security, for, for an attacker to do. So Intel ME, it's an Intel-centric thing. AMD doesn't have a clone of that. They have something called the Platform Security Processor, and it's a different animal. Uh, Apples to oranges here. I don't know if they've got the same kind of issues there, but Management Engine does have some LOM style functionality. It doesn't, doesn't appear to be designed as, as a strictly a LOM chip, but there are apps that you can run, AMT apps that help sysadmins uh, deploy, a, a help manage a fleet. So, so takeaway with this is BMC is on all the big servers out there, but the ME chip is on all the Intel processors out there. So basically all the, all the Intel processors that are right here, except a few of them that are running you know, running, if you've got a Purism box, maybe they've disabled it. Or, um, so, uh, and I don't know about, uh, so Apple has a T2 processor, it's a security processor now. Yes, question. Yeah, so does the BMC sit on the motherboard and then the ME sits inside the actual processor chip? Uh, ME is a separate chip from the CPU, and the BMCs, as I understand it, usually sit on the motherboard, but they can also sit on some PCI uh, interface. Uh, you just refer to proprietary slot card interface. Uh, Sounds that's like mostly gone away. They're mostly just built in now. Okay. Yeah. Um, 
So Apple has a new T2 security processor or the newer, newer books for, for the help of security. So that means now on an Apple box, it's got a CPU. It's got an Intel ME processor, which I've heard various reports that they say they use or they don't use, okay. but it's there. Um, so it's, I'm not sure how much they use AMT. And now they have a T2 processor. So you know, in the old days, there was a CPU. Now on an Apple, there's a, there's, a, there's a ME and there's a T2 and there's the CPU. It gets complex now. And each of these are operating system, has their own operating system, a stack of apps. The bad news is in the old days, these embedded systems were not secure. And so they're like, you know, like you see today when security researchers are enjoy attacking IoT devices because they're, you know, about as secure as machines in the 90s. Early, uh, early BMC chips were about as secure. Now things are getting better, but still um, it's an issue. Uh, and so, like I mentioned in the last slide, the T2, the T2 processor, um, in addition to the BMC processor and the CPU, there is a management controller or a security processor. I should put those in lowercase. They're not, I don't think there's an industry standard term, although some of the Intel specs talk about management controller as a network controller. So, um, yeah, so there, so there, yeah, the ME processor for that. Um, yeah, so we have different, so now we have basically three, three processors. Three processors on servers and two processors on desktops with, with OS stacks and app stacks that need to be um, secured. So BMC is a generic term. Uh, like I said earlier, there's a couple different implementations. Uh, Intel runs the trade group for um, IPMI. It's been around since the uh, 90s. And uh, just last month, they, they announced they're freezing the spec. So it's kind of a, uh, I think these days, activity is mostly in Redfish. Um, again, like I said earlier, DMTF smash and dash. Uh, the Smash is for servers, Dash is for desktops. They both use WS management, but they're very similar in their, in their concept. Uh, I'm not even going to get into this. Most of this is beyond me. Um, these are some of the interfaces that BMCs use to talk to. Uh, some of these are, are on-chip interfaces between one chip and another. Some are from different subcomponents, and then others have uh, network protocols there. So uh, there, that's not even a complete list, unfortunately. I, I, Initially, I was hoping to have like two or three slides per of these, but uh, no, it just didn't happen, sorry. Um, so a big question for me is, uh, well, BMC does, does network traffic. Well, it's, it sounds like most of them have a dedicated NIC, but, and, 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 the, and the main security guidance is isolate that traffic. So only sysadmins in your enterprise can see that traffic and nobody else, but other, implementations piggyback the network traffic on the host NIC, which means that you can't isolate it. I don't know what to do with that. So uh, that to me is one of the bigger questions. If I was uh, looking at um, securing a system, I'd make sure that my networks can physically be separated, because if they can't, yeah. um, it's, it's an issue because, yeah, some of the, some of the old protocols still have, have, clear, have plain text passwords. Um, uh, early versions of IPMI, plain text passwords. If you did passive sniffing, you can get user account name. Once you have user account name, then you can, you can if it doesn't have a password, you can use that. So uh, you really don't want to let people see your plain text. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, later, w one vendor has a phone app that lets you talk to IPMI on your network. And that means that all that data is going through the, not isolated in your local network, it's going over a carrier and coming back down. And so that's a scary thing. Yes, so question. When you say uh, isolated networks, you don't mean VLANs? Uh, is it an isolated physical network? It should be a network where the attacker can't get on. I'm, I'm kind of saying a magic, magic security solution. The, all these NICs should be separate from the NICs where all the regular host traffic is. Okay, so it could be a VLAN on some I, I'm not great at VLAN configuration. I, I think the answer is yes. I'm not positive if that's the right way okay. to do it. Uh, Paul, well, sound sure. probably? So yeah, I mean the more the more separation the better in general. Um, it's a it's a least privilege kind of thing, and this is definitely a very privileged network interface. So VLANs, VPNs, um, old separate physical switches people will do. So separate physical switches. Yeah. Because okay. VLANs are leaky. Yeah, and it, don't send the data over a carrier network. Don't use Wi-Fi. Yeah. Um, well, I mean. Yeah, ideally. <laughs> yeah, so there's a Wi-Fi thing. Don't do that. I won't mention who the vendor is because I'm being taped. Um, but ask me afterwards. Um, and so each vendor has their own uh, vendor. So IPMI is a baseline. Vendors want to add value, and so they add extensions. And so each each vendor has their own set of um, uh, 
their, their name for HP ILO is their IPMI with extra value added feature. Uh, Dell, Hydrac, et cetera. So there's a bunch of those. That's just a partial list. They all have value added stuff. I don't know the scope of how much extra stuff they have. I know uh, Eclipsium gave a talk at DEF CON last year showcasing some security issues on um, HP ILO. Ends up that in addition to the protocols I've been talking about here, like IPMI and Smash and Dash, whatever, HP has, a, a, and that list in the last slide that I didn't understand all the issues there. Actually, that, yeah. Oops. Uh, it's the wrong way. Right there. Yeah, HP has um, HP RIBCL. So that's an HP centric protocol where it's only used in an ILO system. Dell will have their own. I'm sure others have them. There's probably multiple protocols, not just the one. And so I'm not even covering those there. I don't know which ones. So you really have to dig into the vendor docs to understand what, you're, what you've got. And you have to sniff them because you can't trust that the vendor docs are going to um, be, be complete. Um, so there's, uh, so this is the open source firmware track at Linux Fest, which, yay, first time. Um, IPMI is not open source. So closed source, the whole that's closed source. Redfish is, there's not really an implementation per se, like UFI has UFI specs and the Tiana Core implementation. Redfish, DM, DMTF has Redfish specs, but there's no implementation that I know of right now. There is one project called OpenBMC, and so it's a standard uh, backed by Linux Foundation, IBM, Facebook, and a few others. So Facebook uses it inside. So if you're working at Facebook Array, if you're not working at Facebook, it doesn't matter here. Um, uh, if you have an IBM system, um, they use it on their open power systems. Uh, it supports IPMI and in the last release is now supporting Redfish. You can get this in a, you can run this in a QEMU environment. Um, so if you're wanting to test how things work, um, look at the OpenBMC project and start playing around with the IPMI and, and Redfish commands there. It's kind of hard to mess with this on a real box because you need a real server. And uh, if, you, if you hurt that, then they'll get mad at you because those are expensive machines. Yeah. Yes, question. I think that uh, OpenBMC is part of their overall Effort. Yeah, I've got, I've got, order that stuff. I have a slide on, I have another slide on that too, and he's right, it's part of the Open Compute Project. So there's a bunch of vendor-centric technologies, and they add a bunch of additional protocols. Look at all these protocols that are here. Um, so uh, obviously, Devos Man is needed later for Smash and Dash, but it's, a, it's available on other, there's a whole, Active Directory, there's a whole bunch of protocols here. I mean, you can stream video and keyboard, or you remote your whole GUI desktop, right? It's, it's crazy how much stuff. So the, the convenience, the convenience to sysadmins, you know, conversely now, is just a whole bunch of attack services for attackers. Uh, yeah, again, it's OpenBMC. Um, it's a Yocto-based Linux project. So it's basically, a, a, it's the only Linux BMC distribution, right? Um, um, and it's used by multiple vendors, so that's great. Uh, and it, in, the, in the spirit of open source, they're talking about security issues in the public. Uh, that's nice. Um, and if you want to learn more about Open Compute Project, uh, the open, uh, about OpenBMC, the annual Open Compute Project Summit is where everyone gives all the talks there. So go look at the Open Compute su um, Summit. Or I forget what it's called. There's videos of, uh, of all the stuff. So you'll see all the upcoming changes in OpenBMC. There's probably like a, a dozen talks in, in last year's event. So this is the big one, IPMI, Intelligent Platform Management Interface. Uh, and it was it started in the 90s, and uh, it just basically died, or, or froze last month. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's what we've been talking about this, this, whole, this whole time. Um, core features. Uh, yeah. uh, Courtesy Wikipedia to show, shows you a machine you know, in the middle of, a, of an Intel motherboard. It has access to resources. It can see things the CPU can't. Um, I'm not going to go into the specifics of, 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 of all of these different I've, I've got three slides here. I didn't write these slides. I'm, I'm terrible at graphics. Uh, I'm not, I can't explain everything here, but I'm going to show you this to show you how complex the system is <laughs> in terms of inbound and out of bound or sideband interfaces. Um, so, and you'll see a lot of the acronyms here, things on that last slide were um, things I didn't dig into. There's a whole lot of interfaces to IPMI. This is 2.0 stuff. The uh, purple stuff is the kind of last new stuff there. Uh, it's interesting. 
for more firewall. I'm not sure if that's what I'd really call it there. But, um, so VLAN is new. <laughs> okay. uh, so, um, not really mentioned this in the slides, but but IPMI and Redfish both have a model where you you tell it something, you you ask, you you run a command and it does something, and comes back to you, or you send it a web service of some kind, and it does something, and comes back to you. Also, it has events. So, like SNMP, it can proactively send you events that you weren't asking for. So you you subscribe to uh, a subscription of some kind. The implementation is different, but. IPMI and Redfish, so it's like you know Windows people, event log, uh, Unix people, syslog. So there's a set of messages going along in the firmware through IPMI and now also with the Redfish. With Redfish, it's using like HTML5 server notification things, so web stack for it. This is using uh, Smash and Dash. We use web, WS management. Uh, I forgot how they implemented an IPMI um, pre-XML format, so it's a different thing. But they all have that, so you have to realize that there's messages coming along all the time. If you're not watching those, that's a set of uh, that's a source of information about your system that you're not taking advantage <coughs> of, and this is data that's available where an attacker, if he has access to your system, he's watching this as well. Uh, anyway, the events um, in the list of um, vendor-centric protocols added, SNMP was there, so um, you'll see SNMP interfaces to this stuff, um, and um, for IPMI, and later in Redfish. I forget the name of it, but there's an XML-based successor to SNMP, and um, um, one of the, f they kept changing the name so many things, it was an IETF thing, and Yang was one of the parts of it, and so there's a Yang to, there's something, there's the thing called Yang that will read MIBs, SNMP MIBs, and convert them into the schema of Redfish. So in addition to all this transactional do something and give me the results, there's also messages that are going along all the time. So um, you can sit there in a shell, look at it in a browser, but it's a set of data you should look at. Was there a question in the back? Yeah, I keep seeing mention of a watchdog. What's being watchdog? Like, what is it watching? What is it doing? You know? Someone from Intel wanted to give a better description from that. I'm, I was, I'm terrible at watchdog stuff these days. It's timer stuff to keep things active for a for so event. FRB1 and 2, um, they're watching signals uh, on the board to tell if the BIOS is posted uh, in the system. And uh, there's a three second and another one for the, if it comes up in the OS, that one's for firmware posting, FRB1. And I was going to say that, but I just want to let him do it for me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, uh, SMM, we saw earlier, systems management mode. It's the CPU mode that goes into management mode and, and, and where you can't see what it's doing. IPMI uh, talks about um, using I, um, SMM for, for um, uh, I didn't quote it. Yeah, so um, Dan Farmer's research was, was talking about how the IPMI spec talks about the usefulness of systems management interrupts with IPMI. So potentially, both of those attack vectors could be used in combination. Um, and similar, again, between CPU and SMM and between CPU and BMC where one can see everything, the other can't. So they're both good places for malware. They're both hard to find things there. Again, uh, uh, there's links at the end. Dan Farmer, uh, he's the original security researcher that found all the issues in IPMI. Read his research. He's got about three docs, and you really, re if you came to this talk, read his IPMI security best practices, BMC best practices, because um, that's, that's way better than this. Briefly, there was a 1.0 release and a 1.5 release, and there's a, all these problems, and then uh, because the protocol was not designed, there was no security of people in the design of the, of the protocol. And then 2.0 came along, fixed all those problems, and added a couple worse ones. So um, both 1.x and 2.0 all have problems, and you got to look at this uh, doc for research on how to secure the system. Um, and uh, yeah, I shouldn't even have the slide because you really need to read that doc. Um, once you have access to one box, a, a host, if, if they have an account there, you have that account. You, there's a whole, what do they call them? Um, uh, Management groups. So once you have access to one, you have access to the whole all management groups. It sounds like enterprises are not good at, at re re updating their passwords. Uh, there's a lot of clear text stuff. So once you have a password, it's pretty easy to find. You can query the early API, say, are there any users that don't have passwords? And then it'll say yes, and you can use that account. And, it, and so you can do passive sniffing and see the username. Once you have a username, then you can access the system. So. Um, and all BMCs generally, most BMCs generally have a website where you can use a web interface 
And then there's a whole issue about um, um, TLS certs. And uh, look at Dan's research. He found that um, you know most were self-signed, and the other ha and about half were self-signed by Linda Wu at Supermicro. Uh, <laughs> and uh, actually, not more than half. The majority of them were signed by her. And then uh, of all the rest, uh, they were expired. <laughs> so scary situation there. Uh, and if you want to attack the system by you know, uh, 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 cold boot, RAM attacks, and, and flash, there's the passwords there that are stored on disk. The other problem we've had is uh, uh, if you haven't updated your firmware in a long time on, the, on, the, on this, they're, they're using uh, uh, exploitable open SSL as well. And so you can't even access it with modern browsers. And for a while, I actually had to use an older version of Firefox so that I could actually get to the web interfaces. On a, on a tangent, uh, I'm really happy that the Linux community is getting more involved in Tiana Core. It was before that it seemed like a much more of a closed source thing with closed source operating system vendors working. It, it, these days it's nice. Uh, you, Tiana Core needs OpenSSL for secure boot. And in the early days, they were still using 0.9x for, right, after Heartbleed. And, and granted, Heartbleed wasn't impacted there. But now they're finally tracking the latest releases. But it, before that, I was like a pain in the ass. I'd have to annually bug a few people there and say, hey, you're you know, six months too late. The version of OpenSSL that you need to build Tiana Core is no longer listed on the download page on OpenSSL. That's how, that's how old it was. So WS Management, everybody familiar with that? Anybody not familiar with WS Management? SOAP, WSDL, XML, complex XML, patented XML, uh, uh, non-restful, complex, hard to use XML that pretty much Nobody, nobody embraced. Um, so that's what Smash and Dash were, are, are. I don't see much activity in Smash. Dash, they just updated their, self, their, their certification tests last month too, so there's still people using that. Um, it looks like, from my perspective, that, that you know, most of the vendors are using Redfish on the server side. On the client side, I see some AMD um, systems f from Lenovo and Dell using Dash. I don't see anyone else using it. I don't think I see any Intel-based systems using Dash. And I don't see any, I, I haven't been looking too closely for Smash, but I haven't seen much with Smash. But I believe that uh, if the system's got Smash, it's probably got Redfish on it now, too. So, so uh, database management is for Smash and Dash. And uh, Redfish doesn't use that, so I kind of don't care anymore. So there's Dash. OK. So, uh, um, same kind of stuff that, that IPMI covered. But it did it with, with, with you know, WS Management and XML. So that was a whole new thing. And, um, and uh, same with Smash. There's each of these, IPMI, Smash, Dash, Redfish. There's a couple dozen specs for each. Each of them are dozens of pages to thousands of pages. So a lot of time to read them all. For Smash and Dash, there's a separate profile for each unit. There's a profile for the CPU. There's a pr profile for Motherboard, dozens of docs for profiles, which, and for, you know, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, for Smash and Dash, there was the web service interface and then the command line interface, so they had specs for both of them. So WS uh, so Management is kind of weird because WS Management was a standard that was used for OS level stuff too, not just firmware. So, you know, Windows people were using WS Management up, up in apps, right? And nothing to do with firmware, but also it could be used in firmware. So Redfish is the, is, the, is the current one. So what I'd say takeaway here is that most people use IPMI, and now they have Redfish on top of it for their servers. Um, so I'd say pay attention to make sure you've got your IPMI secure, and uh, look into if you're using Redfish. And if you have an old system that's just using IPMI, see if you can get an update that has Redfish. Most of the big vendors have Redfish implementations on top of their IPMI, and ILO, and IDRAX, and all that. And so generally, Newer stuff has more bug fixes. So the big thing about Redfish, it's using, so they were using WS Management, and now the industry has gone beyond WSDL and, and, and SOAP, and so they like RESTful JSON. So that's what this is. So same kind of thing now with JSON and, and RESTful interfaces. It's not just JSON, they use OData. Eh. OData and JSON have schemas, and so um, they've got, there's some standard schemas that all vendors should supply uh, support, and then each vendor can add their own schema. So HP has their own schema to support things, and, and uh, Supermicro, so you can have their own there. And and um, now you can use 
the, the Redfish trade group says, now you can just defer to the industry standard for security for web stuff and, and tools. So you can use your browser and presumably go to like OWASP and secure your system. Um, so again, these are the features, pretty much the same kind of features that you saw in Smash and Dash and IPMI. Uh, yeah, and uh, you know, IPMI had some features, Smash and Dash are growing and Redfish is getting bigger, so they're always gonna be more and more features they want. Um, let's see, I think I just mentioned everything I was going to. Yeah, the latest release of OpenBMC supports Redfish, so that's great. DMTF uh, in the next slide. Um, so the way uh, Redfish works is everything's an URL. URI. Um, so example.org slash redfish slash v1, and then all your stuff happens after that. Later when they get v2 of the spec, you'll put that there. So you put your host name and then and that, and uh, and then there's you know there's a bunch of there you know it, it's the traditional modern schema based thing. It kind of reminds me of a, the Windows registry in the early days when they're trying to have nouns and verbs for everything and. It's the same kind of stuff, um, and they're, they're getting trickier each time, so. Um, let's see. So there's multiple ways to view things, and so you can see all of these or view it in different ways. Um, it means that if you're an attacker, you have to know JSON, JSON schema, and OData version 4, and all of its nuances to, to properly fuzz it. And as a system in, you gotta know these kind of tools as well, and if you're defending the system, you have to know that as well. The Redfish spec, has multiple pages saying, we require these HTTP headers, on uh, this one we do this, and this response we do that. And that's the thing that you've got, people have to sit down and, uh, and make sure they've got, um, pardon, more about that later. These are the tools the Redfish project has on GitHub, they're open source. Um, you see a lot of simulators and emulators, uh, those are not really that useful to me. Uh, all they do is like a web front end to a schema. So it reads the JSON schema, the JSON, the default Redfish schemas, and then presents a view of that, which is you know kind of useless. Um, I mean, it's it's helpful if you're a vendor and you're getting started, but it doesn't show anything useful. If you want to play with it, play with a useful uh, actual implementation, go grab um, OpenBMC, their QMU image, and then you can actually test a real working thing. Uh, but these are good if you're building schemas and testing schemas, and, and, and they're good for vendors that are getting things going. Uh, Redfish tool, command line tool is useful. Uh, Mockup server is useful in that it grabs, it sucks down everything uh, once. So Redfish tool for interactive things, kind of like IPMI tool in the old days. Um, an event listener sample. Uh, Yang. So yeah. So the, the um, schema validation. So if you're if you're using Redfish, you should you could you could use the schema validation tools to make sure that your vendor is not shipping broken schemas. Open source, the, the main language they use is C and Python. Um, external companies, uh, external projects, there's a little bit in Rust, Go, and C Sharp, and Ruby. Um, yeah, but mostly Python. Uh, Python, Redfish is the, is the most, um, most up-to-date library. So basically, uh, and I, I think the problem there is OData is kind of a pain in the, uh, kind of a complex thing to fully support. And so um, um, you should really look at, uh, I think the, the, the blocking issue is gonna have a full implementation of OData. And so if Python, the Python library is good, I, I, outside of that, I'd probably stick with C Sharp because Microsoft likes OData and that's gonna be the best stack for it. I'd be worried about Ruby and Go and Rust. Uh, yeah, so this one uses those standards, SSDP, um, HTTP for alerts for, for, for messages. Uh, schemas. What this also means is they're deferring to these standards orgs for security. So you have to understand this, secure it using all those all these standards. And so they're assuming that you know, web standardization is, is going to be easier to secure. Um, keep reading ahead of myself. Uh, yeah, but again, the, the current there's no current doc that describes Redfish security best practices. There are security best practices docs like OWASP but they don't cover the dozens of pages in the Redfish spec saying, if this happens, do this. If this happens, do that. Uh, so, yeah, so I, I, DMTF, Redfish Working Group, is deferring to the web community for security. I'm kind of saying, I don't have anything great to show you for that. 
you need to defer that as well. But look at the red fish spec that says, you know, when this HTTP error happens, expect this or do that. Okay. Uh, hopefully, some will have some better results there. I'm, I'm working on something, but it's not ready yet. Uh, in terms of security tools for testing BMCs, uh, Metasploit uh, has a couple modules. IPMyPon is basically a duplicate of the Metasploit module, so you don't need to mess with that. Um, general interface tools, IPMI tool, open, I, open IPMI, and free, free IPMI have the command line tools, other ways to get to it. Hashcat and John Ripper understand IPMI centric password issues, so you can break, you can break systems with that. Uh, in so, a later slide, there's some more research I'll point you to. That research uses this toolkit, which is it's tight, it's HP ILO centric, but it is a Redfish based attack on their system. So it's using Redfish to attack um, that system. So it's the only Redfish, Redfish based attack that I know. Obviously, there's many vendor centric tools you can use. And these are new processors on the system, running operating system, embedded stacks. So you can, depending on when you can get access to it, you can use traditional tools to it. You know, um, one of the vendors, you know, they'll use traditional open source. You'll see like drop bear SSH, bug fix, right? So depending on where you can hook into the stack, um, there's limited view when, when, those, when BMCs are active um, and, and for the management engine too. But when, if you can get access during those times, the traditional embedded, embedded system tools are also useful. Uh, yeah, so there's kind of three sections of, of hardening. For IPMI, just read Dan's stuff. There's nothing else good for that. And, and your vendor center docs. For Smash and Dash, you're going to have to look for WS MAN security uh, best practices. And for Redfish, traditional JSON web security best practices. I've been, uh, if I hadn't slept last night, I could have had a few more slides on this, but I don't have that. Uh, I've been gathering up all the different qu um, best practices for uh, uh, Redfish, uh, Smash Dash, and IPMI from different vendors. Each vendor has their own sets of things. Some of the advice from one vendor is useful for all the other vendors, but the other vendors don't mention it. So we've got one, I'm gathering it up. I've collated it, I've got to properly credit them, and then we'll be putting it on our pre op site. Uh, site. Uh, we've got an ebook for uh, BIOS level security issues. We want to update that in the future to have the stuff for, for BMC level stuff. So there'll be a, a quick reference for that in the, in the probably two or three weeks. Uh, so, calls to action the main one for you is this one learn how to secure your systems, learn what you're running, and look at the, for the different protocols that are being used here. Uh, sniff them all the time. You know, uh, your, your BMC shouldn't be talking outside your network, right? If it's trying to t talk to Google or someone else, that's probably a bad thing. You need to be watching that. And we need to, at a higher level, uh, we, as a community, that we need to get better explicit guidance for Redfish and, um, and I guess legacy stuff like Smash and Dash, but at least for Redfish, starting backwards. And for the system being community, we need to get that into their training, training coursework because it's not there now, right? Um, and I was trying for the talk to see if there's any best best practices for for the MB processor. I couldn't find that. It'd be great if someone at Intel knew uh, someone on that team to maybe suggest that they'd make one. So more information. I've got three slides here. There's the vendor stuff. Um, this is a pretty good introduction to some of the some of the technology we were talking about, inbound, out of band, all that. It's a pretty good introduction. Uh, these slides will be a point of the slides later. This is basically it when it comes to sysadmin usage of Redfish at the moment. There's basically three, three sections of, of content, one talk and two other things. Um, so uh, it's probably the closest thing to get started. You know, defending a system, modern stuff is Redfish. Here's people talking about using it mostly with a, 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 autom automating with Ansible. Um, yes, question? Um, I think there are also puppet libraries. Uh, for yes, they are. Yeah, but, but the examples that I've seen in terms of b people giving talks or videos right. is with Ansible. I mean, I'm, not, I'm not getting paid by Ansible to say anything. Um, so a little more, more uh, basically, try, look. so the guidance that I'm working on looks at all the different vendors' guidance because they've got a, a bunch. Um, US CERT summarizes it pretty well. Basically, it's just summarizing the, the Metasploit doc. Uh, Cisco, it's nice to hear what they're talking about from their perspective on routers. Uh, IBM's not bad, and Supermicro got burned the most, so they have a pretty decent doc as well. Um, and then this is the one you really should be reading. Uh, and I, I will, I've got to fix this URL before I post the slides, so that's the one thing I've got to fix before I do that. But uh, Dan Farmer's site has about four documents to read, especially read that one, but uh, there's a few more to read there. Uh, this site is also excellent, H.D. Moore, the guy that did Metasploit. Um, talks about how to attack the system, shows the Metasploit modules to attack it, 
has a table that shows the default passwords, usernames for most of the modern, most implementations of IPMI. Things like admin, really simple. So attackers know all these defaults. If you're using those defaults right now, you're, you're screwed. Um, and uh, so those are things from 2013. These things are from 2008, from last year. And uh, multiple ones are from the same author. You see this one, this one, yeah, this one. Uh, um, yeah, so there's a few by, by these guys, and there's one by them, and there's one by them. And, and this one, this tech, the remotely attacking system from where they talk about HP ILO issues, and that one protocol I mentioned earlier. And uh, Nico, uh, the unbearable lightness of BMC does a pretty good job of, of summarizing the, the history beforehand, which I was trying to do here. So uh, this is also a good introduction to the history, and uh, this happened, this talk happened because of all the slew of other new things that are happening. So he's like, here's what happened in the past, here's all the new stuff, you need to worry about that. Right? So, uh, um, and these the names of all the people here are the people I've put in the credits at the beginning because that's basically all I've been doing. All right, that's it for the thing. I will put uh, firmersecurity.com as our blog, and I'll have a pointer to these slides up on the blog. Um, two or three days, I got to mow tomorrow, and uh, I got to fix a couple earls there, and then I'll put it online. So uh, that's it for this. Any questions? Any comments? Any criticisms? No tomatoes, please. Question. So I think you mentioned that um, a lot of the vendors implemented Redfish on top of their IPMI. They have, so they have, each vendor has their own proprietary BMC distribution, and they, it supported IPMI, and maybe Snapshot Dash, and now they're using Redfish. Maybe they're getting rid of some of that, maybe they're putting it all in there having one, one distro. It seems like, I, I, I'm not, I don't know, it seems like to me that, that, that latest for HP and Dell, um, those tools kind of span both protocols and, and you can use either one. And so, um, so from, a, from a security footprint uh, point of view, could, is it possible on these platforms to disable IPMI completely and just use Redfish and secure Redfish? I don't think so. I think you might be able to disable IPMI or BMC totally, but if you do that, you probably can't have it Redfish. You probably won't be able to do one or the other. Um, I don't have some of the fancy machines that have been tested there, so you'll, you'll probably be able to tell better than me. You can, you can turn off the IPMI network interface. But can you turn off IPMI and red, uh, enable Redfish? Yeah, well, you know, I don't know. typically new, you know, these new Redfish implementations still use IPMI behind the covers, right? They are tunneling, essentially. But what, what the world sees is, uh, you know, from the outside interface is Redfish, which is HTTPS. Port 623, UDP yeah, port yeah, 623, yeah. which is RCMP for IPMI over LAN, you can turn that off, uh, and you can still do ILO over Redfish. I think like that. At least lose that, you know, old uh, network security that was built into it's RCMP a, and isn't getting developed. It's a great problem. If you think you have a brand new Redfish machine, try IPMI tool and look and see if you can find. IPMI, if you do, that means you can't ignore IPMI anymore. You still have to harden it or try to disable it as well as using Redfish. And make sure that your vendor has turned off Cypher Zero. Yeah, 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 yeah you've got, you got to read Dan's firmware. And put any password yeah. in. There's half a dozen things in IPMI that are insane. Um, um, you have to read Dan's device. And there's a similar, there's a, so there's a similar CVE for Intel ME, AMT, where for, since like mid-2000s up until like last year, the year before, the password code was never, never tested. So you could log in whatever you wanted and the password would, would work. So uh, update your firmware for that, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, but that, that's a perfect example of why you need to make sure you're up to date or disabled. Because if that's, I mean imagine that. That means in multiple years, Intel machines that are powered off, they can still be attacked if those, if, if, uh, if they were, you know. and, and yeah. And, and, and go look on Shodan to see some of these protocols and see how widely they're being used. There's a couple of really big companies that have stuff out there that's, you know, I, I used to have a, I used to have a, uh, I switched my carrier because one of the carriers was had such a bad example on Shodan. Uh, I can't see it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> um, any other questions? Okay. Well, I've got a. Um, Bad bio sticker up front, and I've got some quick references for a, pro a tool called ChipSec, which is an open source firmware tool. It's not a BMC tool, but it's, it's to test that your UEFI firmware on your CPU. And um, I think um, 
Stefano has a sticker maybe for it. Um, but I've got a quick reference to how to use it. Uh, I'll be right afterwards if you've got any other questions. Uh, so 